Yep. In my last video, we made this button in the style of Google Material Design. You click it, it has this nice animated effect. However, if you spam click it, it kind of breaks the animation. And then also if you click and move your mouse while you're clicking it, the, the circle actually moves with the mouse pointer, which is kind of weird. So we're going to have a look at fixing that today with some GSAP. I've got a very similar Webflow project open here. Uh, you'll notice it's very similar to the old one. There's no interactions on it though. I have this M button inside it, button text, and the circle. The big one to know about, let's see, is this M button is set to position relative. I've got overflow off right now or hidden. I'm gonna turn that off uh, just so we can see what we're working on. And then that's it for the button. The circle element nested inside has this width of 200%, the width of the button, and then the top padding is 200%, which will just match this width so we get a perfect square. And then we round the corners off with 100 VW to make that a full circle. Uh, it's set to position absolute at the top left. And then the color is set to white with a 30% opacity. The move I have negative 50% and negative 50% because I want the middle of the circle to be right where the top left of the button is. Where that's what we're going to use as our reference point. You can see if I move this, then we're at the top left. But I'll put the transform back on, negative 50% and negative 50%. Okay, and I can go ahead and republish. The only other thing happening on this page, I'm in VS Code today. I'm working with TypeScript. Uh, I'll try to walk you through that. If you know JavaScript, don't worry, it's not too scary. Anyways, I'm hosting the code on my own computer. That's this localhost on port 3000, and then it's index.js. So let's have a quick look at the button here. We can click, click spam it. So if you're using this for like a game or something, then it'll be great. And then also um, the circle does not move with the click. All right, let's hop into the code. I'm in VS Code here. I've got an event listener on the document for when the DOM content is loaded to run this init function. I'm defining that up here. And I'm also importing GSAP um, using NPM. I did NPM install GSAP. Uh, so first thing we're gonna wanna do is we wanna get a reference to our button. That's with the M dash button attribute that we defined in Webflow here. Not sure if I actually showed that. And button over in settings, we've got WB dash data equals M button. Hopefully there's nothing new for you. And if that doesn't exist, then we just return and exit the code. The next thing we want to get is that circle element nested inside. So we're looking for the data attribute WB data equals circle. And if that doesn't exist, then we return. All right, first thing we're going to do is just using GSAP, we're going to set the scale and opacity um, values that we wanted to start from. So we want to start from a scale of zero and an opacity of one, which is going to correspond to 100%. So we're not going to be able to see anything, but that's fine because that's how we want it to start off. And then we're going to add a click event listener on M button, and we're going to define a function to happen when we click the button. So that's right here. We're defining an anonymous function. The event listener gets an event by default as a parameter. So we're passing that, and then this is just TypeScript. We're specifying that this uh, this E variable is a type of event. And then I've got open close brackets here that we'll define our function in. All right, so first thing we want to do is calculate the distance between where the user clicks and the top left corner of the button. And so we're going to do some math here. Don't be scared. The first thing we're going to look at is our X distance. And the main thing we want is the e event dot client X. And then all we're saying here with as pointer event is we're specifying what type of event it is. This is a pointer event, which is basically um, a mouse click in this case. And client X returns us the, um, the X coordinate of that click. And then we're going to subtract the X position of the M button. And the way we get that is this get bounding client rec function, open close parentheses dot X. So this will just give us the distance between where we want our, where our click is and where the, the left position of the button is. And next we're gonna get the Y distance and it's just the same as the X, but now we're doing client Y and dot Y here for the M button. So now that we have those, we can apply those to our top and left. Uh, so we're gonna immediately set these with GSAP by using gsap.set. We'll pass in the circle element, which is the one that we're getting here that we wanna access. And then we're gonna open an ob a JavaScript object here with a parameter of left. And we're going to set that to X distance and top, and we're going to set that to Y distance. Next, we want to animate the actual circle. And this is where GSAP really comes in handy. We're going to use a from to animation. And we're going to say gsap.from2. We're going to pass that circle element. That's the element that we want to animate. And then a comma. The second argument is going to be a whole JavaScript object here, scale of zero and opacity of one. That's our from um, properties. 
another comma, and then a JavaScript object here. This is our two object. We're going to scale to one, opacity zero. I set a duration of 0.5 seconds, and we'll set an easing function here of ease.out. And if we save that, and let me bring up this here, we're going to npm run build, and we have our working button now. Now let's go ahead and set this back to hidden, the overflow. So we'll publish that. Refresh. And we can see it's behaving just as we want. Now something else I want to show you is we can inspect, you know, if we're spamming the button, we can kind of have a look at um, what we're doing there. So the GSEP has this, uh, what is it, global timeline? Yes. And then we can get children of that global timeline. And that'll return us an array of all the tweens that we've made. And the tweens are made by this gsap.from too. And just so we can see that, I'm going to wrap this in a console log, save, npm run build. And now let's go back to our project, open up our inspector. And now you can see it normally gets one tween, but if I click fast enough, which is less than 0.5 seconds, uh, we're getting more tweens in that array. And it seems like the fastest I can click is four times in a half second. Uh, so these are the tweens. So that's so just something to know about. Um, the global timeline has this auto, auto remove children property that's set to true so that our the garbage collector just comes and, and tosses them out. So we don't have to worry about if we're spamming the button, making a bunch of tweens. Uh, the other thing we should do is we probably want to have multiple buttons on our page that use this property. So there's a really easy way to do that. Rather than define, here I need a little more space. All of this here, we'll say, uh, let's say const m buttons equals query selector all. So it's going to get everything with this data attribute. And then we're going to define a for loop by doing m buttons dot for each, open and close parentheses. And now we're going to pass it an anonymous function just like this. And I want to take all of this. I'm going to cut and I'm going to paste it. When I save, it's going to auto format for me. And now that for each will get the M button as well. So that's what these red underlines are doing there. We're going to save that, bring the terminal back up. I'm going to go ahead and run build. Let's go back to our Webflow project. We'll duplicate this button if I can select it. So now we have two. Let's publish and we'll refresh. And just like that, we have two buttons here, both working, being great. So hopefully that taught you something new in GSAP. If you liked that, please like and subscribe to the video. And I'll put all the resources in the description box below. Please, if you want to support me, check out my Patreon. That helps a lot. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.